How they have a nice introduction to people. For, for instance, Paro has very strong communicative introduction. All children are rushing to Paro and ah, oh, cute, cute. You know. So every day, so he, he, well, I don't know, she is uh, quite uh, friendly and a hero in the house. But uh, step by step, they are moving to also telenoids or to Tabby or animated lamp. So this has a different, so to say, approach to people. He is always, in a way, saying, you know, watch me or something. He is a, not he, this is just a lamp by the shape memory structure. And this is just a breathing, but with tire, yeah? but giving a bit impression as like a creature. This telenoid is a te uh, same piece, uh, store, uh, so to say context as Ishiguro's piece. Uh, you can control this telenoid uh, a bit uh, far away. If you go to the so, telenoid station, you can control this telenoid as, you, as if you are uh, so to say, on it, on inside of this. So you can, so to say, start to hug and you can listen to his voice or you can see his facial expression. It's a kind of, so to say, new forms of telephone, so telenoid, yeah? But uh, so in this place, uh, uh, we have a very nice partnership with Professor Ishiguro and uh, we, sh we are showing a telenoid and also this small airport as a mobile phone type, and also Hugby. And uh, by using this unique infrastructure of Robotinity, we are even observing the, so to say, uh, progress of this telenoid. It means every year, every month, so to say, three months, we are updating the, you know, pr research progress. So it means uh, at the end, I don't know, one year later, <laughs> this form might be completely changing or something really minimum or something. I'm not sure. But uh, we are opening this environment for the active researchers to use the daily observation and uh, or actual scenarios uh, for their experiments. And uh, so, so far I explained a bit, so to say, uh, dreamy uh, robots probably for the general public, but uh, my, so to say, Another point is uh, to show the reality. For example, now, if we see the reality, for example, this uh, medical use, how the robot is used for the medical uh, cases, or in the future, so as a medicine, it might be used. For instance, this is a nano robot to uh, explore inside of this, uh, inside of the body and or so ear aid so it means that we are surrounded by artificial so to say uh, uh, aid system now or, or, always and also uh, yeah this is a so direction of uh, prosthetic and uh, so from autobook we borrow this uh, robot but as you remember in this year's olympic so pistorius from uh, South Africa was no, so to say, nominated as a normal athlete in the Olympic game. And uh, what if you lose your leg? What if you, I lost my hand? So do I, so to say, add my new hand or leg? Or what's the meaning of this? And what's the border between human and uh, robot? So always, so if we are talking about a robot, What's the function? What's the nature of a robot system? Or always, it's quite you know, so say changing, uh, so mirroring of the discussion of humanity. For example, uh, this piece uh, we borrowed from uh, Vienna Technical Museum, and uh, this uh, prosthetic leg was uh, made in early 20th century, and. Uh, but uh, it's not just now, but from ancient, we humankind used to look for our, so to say, forms as a human being, right? But uh, we are not just focusing on this serious direction, but uh, of course we had to show this. But at the same time, as I said, 
artistic you know, approach is very important in this exhibition. We are not a science museum. Uh, we are not art, art museum. So we are kind of a hybrid. So this piece by Ryota Kurakubo, Shiri Flin, is a super great piece. <laughs> and uh, when Otto Bock explains uh, artificial leg, so prosthetic, he asked you guys, uh, visitors, what about the tire? You know, this is a tire, so you can wear this gadget. And if you walk with your balance, this tire is, you know, moving and changing. All people are changing behavior, actions, surprisingly. Suddenly, they are, you know, getting slow. <laughs> and this balance is not like this, you know, like this. <laughs> Imagine, so this kind of device is really giving our, so to say, all the memory, probably, <laughs> to, because still we have this small tire, right? Everybody has, yeah, no? But uh, surprisingly, after, so to say, this experience, probably everyone will feel something missing. <laughs> After this, yeah. <laughs> this was a quite uh, interesting questions from artists, not just a solution. So artist is always giving questions, which is a so to say direction. Is it old or is it new? Always they are asking this kind of really interesting questions. Okay. And uh, in this exhibition, as I said at the beginning. Uh, our focus is not just giving the series of the robot or series of the project. Uh, we are really focusing on the uh, more, so to say, actual experience that people can create the robot. For instance, here we show three projects. Uh, one is a bit interactive dr sketch drawing for, uh, so to say, dr drawing the future robot ideas by the, this gadget, but another one is uh, uh, my bot, actually it's me. <laughs> my bot is a workshop, uh, very simple workshop, I am gonna show. Uh, so you can draw your face, you can capture your face, and you can make a simple flip book anim animation system, and you can export your, so to say, uh, animation to the iPad Nano, iPod Nano, yeah? And uh, then you can combine with, uh, I don't know, your favorite body. So it means uh, you can export your face to monitor, then you can select, okay, which is a nice body for me or something like that. But, you know, so uh, here is a general so the impression of a robot in the expression. You can a bit refer. But uh, as I said, I have my face, I have my body. Too today. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, so in the future it might be different. And uh, in this MyBot, uh, this is just a, a video. This is, might be nice for understanding the process to make the, so to say, your own robot. Very simple drawing system to draw. And first you can capture your face and you can add your, so to say, decoration as you like. Then, uh, this has a, a flipbook function, so it, it, you can add just another frame, then just uh, capture your face in different ways. It means uh, just uh, two state now, so open mouth, close up, yeah. But, uh, so the idea is uh, to sort of say export yourself to another form. So we tend to trust, I'm here, my soul is here. But uh, in this process, in the future, you know, so as, as you know, the famous uh, comic as a ghost in the shell. Yeah. So why we have this body? Where is our soul? But uh, through this process, as a family, what if, you know, for instance, Mashu is in, exported to this <laughs> robot? And uh, how the daughters are feeling, you know, this situation, for instance, even changing? <laughs> You can try how you are working, or you know, even you know, changing the body part. The impression is quite changing, right? And 
every day in our Sektenka Center, those are you know, visitors' results. When I go there, every time all creativity will be shown, every time we, the results are changing, really surprisingly. Yeah, this is just an <laughs> example by this boy. But uh, yeah, they like very much to export himself to the outside sort of the object. This is just one example how to give the opportunity that as a really instant workshop. Yeah? Another one is also this is a super instant workshop that we developed together with Nikki. It's a the robot. It's actually this is an eye blinking sort of gadget by the same artist of Shiriflin. And this is a, so eye blinking. But what we gave was uh, just we opened this whiteboard for people, creative robot. Then this is just one example. This is another example. If you go to this place, every time you can find a strange robot by using this metaphor of two eyes. So every time we can see many interesting creativity by people. So I sh I showed showed the introduced. Uh, uh, permanent exhibition, but briefly I'm gonna show the, also our so to say, special temporary robot project. And uh, as I said uh, at the beginning in the introduction, our purpose why uh, we are in inviting the so to say international uh, project, uh, not just introducing, but rather finding something together uh, with the partners. For example. This is a, uh, you know, uh, Murata boy. This is a uh, so, uh, project uh, uh, for Murata boy. Basically, this Murata boy is always showed in the techno festival. Always, you know, in this stable environment. What we did was, let's take him to outside. So we made the uh, cultural and educational so to say, trip uh, around the lens. And uh, what we did was a more physical experience in the outside. The interesting thing was, you know, Murata Bo is always great because uh, inside of here, this has a gyro system to keep the balance. Surprisingly, it's hard, you know, to keep this balance, yeah? But uh, in the normal exhibition, for instance, here, there are no wind. It's quite easy to you know, move. But outside, <laughs> they are so serious. And uh, for instance, I, I'll show. Uh, so behind this robot, in outside, always technicians are you know, super close to catch in case this robot is fallen down. But uh, at this moment, we can see the really tension, actual tension, so uh, of the so to say reality. How this robot can't, you know, uh, act in the real setting. So of course, in the exhibition space, as he or they plant, he is moving, but uh, nothing. You know. But uh, in the real setting. This system works to sustain, show, showing the really strong empathy to people. In this way, so what we are trying as, uh, with partners are always trying next, trying just one, as one word, it's going to be social. Society is a very important keyword. How to show the, this project to the society is very important. Especially in this, next will be uh, Ajimo, uh, no. But uh, especially in the industry projects like Honda or Murata Boy, in my opinion, 2005 was a quite important year for the Japanese industry because 2005, but what was happened? Actually, there was Expo in Japan. The International Expo was held in 2005. All so to say, governments or industry wanted to create the robots. Yeah? So it means the budget is, you know, but after 2005, you know, how to say, the tension was gone. And uh, what we tried was after 2005, syndrome, so I, I call it as a, this kind, how to, so to say, go to next level. 
so with this great result. So, and uh, this is just a tip, uh, Japanese issue, but uh, ah, ne next one is not uh, uh, Ajimo, but the next one was a uh, Geminoid project. And uh, this was, uh, as I said, we have very strong partnership with Professor Shiguro. And uh, so he made uh, now so three robots. But uh, what we <coughs> uh, invited was uh, this robot. And uh, this was a first premium uh, all robot world to bring the robot to outside. So in 2000, it was in 2009, before it, uh, he showed only in the laboratory. But what we asked was, let's bring to the public. So then what we did was, we put this, his Android in the normal cafe <laughs> of our Sectonica Center. Here. <laughs> Actually, we conducted secret experiments three weeks and uh, two weeks uh, just uh, normal exhibitions in the main gallery but mainly the focus was to put this robot in the cafe without any notification so just uh, you know children are always interested in the so to say robot and they are quite easily uh, finding the robot but the normal people are just you know uh, going up elevator opening and just passing you know they don't care the robot at all. In my calculation, 60% didn't care. Just a passing. They didn't realize <laughs> it is that it is a robot. Yeah. But of course, if once you know, so someone finds, everybody is approaching. But uh, uh, in this project, what we offered was, uh, of course, this really unique setting. We put many camera together. We designed the research so to say, system together, and also we conducted artistic demonstration. But sometimes Ishiguro connected from Osaka to you know, control his robot remotely. And a very interesting uh, yeah, thing, uh, yeah, I saw many interesting stories. For instance, one very famous one was uh, in this cafe, so there was one female regularly coming, so she is a kind of a heavy customer, yeah? and uh, she found this robot, and uh, yeah, she immediately understand. Ah, oh, this is robot, and you. She complained. You have have to modify here. You know, this is not good or something like that. And uh, then, so one week later, we actually switched this robot to real professor Ishiguro. So we exchanged, mm -hmm. and uh, then again the female came to the cafe, and uh, so she approached. Oh. Oh, getting better, <laughs> she said. Yeah. So it means, uh, you know, yeah. Afterwards, she realized. But uh, you know, the discussion was uh, after this uh, moment of Ishiguro came. Uh, uh, discussion was quite interesting. So the discussion was moved from our Sektenka Center to the city of Linz because Ishiguro is walking through the city, and the robot was quite uh, reported on the newspaper. So it means that everybody knows uh, Ishiguro's robot. But uh, sometimes people are, uh, you know, <laughs> meeting with a uh, walking Ishiguro. And the question is, uh, is it a robot? <laughs> you know, is it a professor? You know, it means that we are quite succeeded in, so to say, uh, bringing the discussion, discourse, to the city of Linz. So it means uh, this was a quite one, wonderful, so to say, one of the very interesting results. And uh, through this uh, experiment, of course, uh, the team of Ishiguro made many papers. How people behaved, how uh, in Europe people were sort of approaching, what was a factor, they made very nice papers. And uh, so it means that we are doing a win-win sort of collaboration. We are sort of say, uh, introducing in unique ways for stepping into the next phase of the robot. But uh, for the researchers, they can get really new experience, uh, experience right? Okay. And uh, then in 2010, uh, what uh, we realized was also this was super interesting project with Honda R&D. And uh, what we did was uh, 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 research, collaborative research uh, for human-robot interaction. So 
uh, for Ajimo. And uh, we uh, actually, Ajimo stayed one month totally. And uh, so by the method was, as I said, you know, by combining this uh, unique environment of deep space and the robot. And uh, how I, so to say, tried to invite was, I explained my experience in science museum in Japan. It's called Miraikan, so very famous uh, science center. It has always permanent exhibition of Ajimo. But what I found was always, for instance, if I'm Ajimo, <laughs> so here is a line, you know, very clear border. So don't step in because dangerous or something like that. And uh, so it means we can see the clear borders between stage and normal, so to say, world. What I wanted to do was destroy this line and what's happening in the reality. Then this is it. So what we future have developed was uh, we made a, a very simple game. So by tracking the position of people, and you can step into the star. And uh, if you step in, this star is going up. Just do that. And uh, also Ashimo can step. But through this game, so we are quite crossing. But how to you know, tell people don't cross? Or I don't know how to tell by gesture or something other elements. So we conducted. And also by using this unique infrastructure from above, uh, they so say, observed how people uh, have unique behaviors or actions. And also in different culture, so compared to Japan, because they never conducted the so to say, fundamental research for the a bit cultural difference, especially compared to Europe. And this was a very nice, uh, in a way, uh, study, I think, also for them. But uh, through this experiment, uh, uh, we had a very strong, so to say, collaboration. But uh, very, so to say, what I could be proud is uh, after this uh, collaboration, deep, deep uh, collaboration, on the R and D started a uh, new, so to say, their topic as Honda Robotics. Before it, they didn't say the, this is a Honda Ashimo project, yeah? But afterwards, of course, it's not just our result, but by combining many research results from their side, probably I hope they made the new dimensions, how to shift the Ashimo to the society, yeah? So, but as you know, so, uh, in 2011, uh, Japan had a big problem of uh, Fukushima. And uh, as far as I know, so in many, so to say, companies like Honda or those companies uh, got a kind of, so to say, question, what are they doing? We attempted was, <laughs> again, a bit artistic, but uh, quite a strange way. Uh, it was uh, to put Android in the church. So, of course, you know, each church is a, uh, kind of symbolic of, so to say, religion. And uh, so I had to have a, in a way, important presentation to the church people why I'm doing this, yeah? But uh, the point of this, yeah, you know, so this is uh, why I'm showing this. But uh, so our argument was quite uh, great, uh, so to say, interesting. Uh, Ishiguro is not making this uh, new humankind or something. He is uh, making this, in a way, media for searching for the humanity. What's the humanity? He is not interested in making this object. He is really interested in the, so to say, philosophical questions. What, what are we? So in this context, so they are really so accepted. So, and, uh, but in this, uh, actually this was uh, uh, in the Linz church, and the uh, biggest dome. And uh, during the festival, so we introduced this piece so, uh, as a permanent regular performance. Yeah? But uh, as I said, uh, we are Sectronica is basically combating uh, the robotic activities to the social direction, but a bit artistic approach. And uh, 
I have a bit uh, this kind of picture. And uh, R means a robot, and P is a people. But uh, okay, robotinity is our platform. Yeah. So it's a kind of chemical, so to say, a catalyst. Robotinity is like a catalyst. If you know we put a robot, if you are here, and also society is social reality is important. But what we can see is uh, always humanity. So if we are talking about a robot. Always, okay, yeah, always referring to what the, so to say, humankind. So it means uh, this uh, robotinity is always uh, mirroring humanity. But uh, what I found was uh, so, uh, three, so to say, important steps. Was uh, how to design this uh, observation environment. Uh, not to just, you know, introducing the robot. How to sort of say, observe the change of robotinity? What if you know even in our robotinity exhibition, even in one year, two years, robotinity is uh, slightly changing. Yeah? So it means how to make the sort of say, system to observe the change of the robotinity all over the world, probably in Prague, in Japan, uh, probably also depending on the place, it might be it should be different. Yeah. So the forms of robotinity. Uh, robotinity, as I said, really com combination, uh, fusion between other and the, tech, the latest technologies. So this is a very important number one. And the second thing is, uh, uh, as I we introduce Ishiguro in front of Geminoid, this is a quite, uh, so to say, symbolic moment. For instance, if I see this robot, who is a creator? Who is a creator? artist of that robot. If we can see this uh, association with the robot and the, so to say, artist, so this, so to say, balance is very important. I think robot uh, might have the, uh, have the cultural, so to say, gene, like a meme. You know, meme is a cultural gene, yeah? Meme, theory, you know? And, uh, uh, if I and Mashu create one so to say, new robot, I am giving my gene to this, and you are giving your gene to this. For instance, even this TV, I think so many so to say, developers joined uh, to realize this. If we can see this, so to say, all credit, this is uh, so to say, all genes, uh, in a way, cultural genes for making this. But in this way, if robot could be explained or translated in this way, probably we can understand why they are making a robot more. So, uh, so it means uh, how to show the background of the robot, who made it. And uh, for instance, as we discussed yesterday, uh, now so if we see many robotic artists or professors, basically all uh, men, for example. Yeah? But, uh, so I'm not talking about the gender thing, but uh, so also this might be connecting to the forms of the robot. So then final one is as I introduced in the social robot studio, how to invite so people to create as a physical experience. As I said, now surprisingly the so production cost, meeting cost by Facebook, it's getting so low, yeah compared to last, so to say, 10 years. It's easy and speedy. So it means the cost to produce one physical f fusion model is getting easier. So in this direction, so how to invite younger generation to try this might be quite interesting for discussing. And uh, so I'm approaching to the conclusion, but uh, now, so I'm going to refer to one uh, reference from uh, the first Japanese robot textbook. Uh, and uh, so it was published in 2004. The robotic researchers gathered and they made the, in a way, textbook, say robot. And, uh, and based on this picture, so I added many elements personally for my curation map for the robotinity exhibition. I just uh, sh I'm just showing this. 
but uh, in this picture, what they mean, meant was uh, robotics, and uh, here is uh, biotechnology. So from biotechnology to robotics is a really broad, so to say, science field uh, in terms of human beings. Yeah? And uh, what they suggested was, uh, what about adding another axis? QOL uh, means uh, quality of life, actually. So QOL uh, is uh, uh, how to consider the quality of life, a bit the direction of design. But uh, so what he suggested was uh, missing strong area might be art. So now, so if we are talking about so to say next studies beyond so robotics or biotechnologies, we might be able to see the new so to say studies called humanics or something. But uh, this was uh, explained in the textbook in the robotics magazine. Uh, not magazine, robotics book. But what I would point out was, uh, yeah, also I totally agree about this missing area about art. So QOL, like auto book, and also design, such a machine, is uh, of course giving the solution. But I think a robot has a very, so to say, intuitive metaphor to, to the art. And uh, at the end, I'm gonna refer my <laughs> my very favorite, so to say, uh, recent my favorite phrase uh, by John Maida, and uh, he uh, made a very nice uh, article about the differences between designers and artists. So designers uh, uh, create solutions, and uh, so the products and the service that prepare us for it. Yeah. So, but artists create questions. So uh, I'm always asking recently to me, so the deep probing of the purpose and the meaning that sometimes takes us backward and sideways to reveal which way what actually is. So this is a quite, I thought, a very uh, philosophical question also connecting to robot. So, uh, in this context, uh, for instance, Ishiguro piece is, uh, I would say, art. So he is really asking very fundamental questions. Uh, so are we a hum human <laughs> or a robot <laughs> or this kind? So he is always asking very philosophical questions. It means in my, so to say, uh, context, he is a really, in a way, great artist in the next so, level. Yeah. But uh, as a conclusion, I would say so. Robotinity is basically mirrors our society, and uh, so uh, we are Sectronica is now currently developing this uh, so to say new ways to search for robotinity in many forms, and we are very welcoming to collaborate. So from your individual perspective because this robotinity is uh, always changing. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you for listening.